Lots of controversy over the 4% sustainable withdrawal rule in retirement. Is it making a comeback? I'm gonna give you some perspective. That more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. The 4% rule. Do you, are you familiar with what this is? I would hope so. Uh, retirement is uh, typically your, your biggest financial goal right there next to you know, getting debt free or um, you know, helping kids with college. And yes, there's ancillary ones in there as well, but typically the biggie is retirement. And so you're saving up towards retirement for several decades. And then a, what's, what's, how, how much can you withdraw from your portfolio without drawing too much, without de depleting it too quickly? And short of comprehensive financial planning, I'm gonna share our approach here in just a second. There's been a lot of analysis to determine, well, what percentage of your overall portfolio can you withdraw? And, and have it be a sustainable number. Have it be where you're not withdrawing too, too much too quickly. And gosh, lots of analysis was done, um, oh, about 20 years ago now. And looking at rolling time periods and different stock market returns, both you know, US stock market and bond market. But then also then that analysis was redone with other, with more diversification and that enhanced things tremendously by the way. But what they found was that from age, you know, 65, withdrawing about 4% per year, your portfolio should last 20 to 25 years as, uh, you know, that should be a sustainable withdrawal amount, this 4%. And that became known as the 4% rule. And a little bit more of the details with this is, you know, you start withdrawing 4% of your portfolio, but then you increase that 4% by inflation uh, each year. And so you're, and it's not like when you're 80 years old, you're still withdrawing just 4% of your portfolio. It's increased with inflation. And this sort of lines up with some of the required minimum distribution calculations as well. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the 4% rule. But here's the thing. I mean, even though that, that was historically based, it was looking at history and data and you know all sorts of different time periods, we hadn't seen a sustained time period during those trials where interest rates were essentially zero or 1%. And when you take a look at what your overall composition or allocation is of your, your investment portfolio in retirement, for most people, you know, a large portion of it is in bond investments, low risk investments, lower risk investments, I should say that, as opposed to, as opposed to stocks and bonds, if half of your money is in bonds when you retire or in your retirement at some point, and those bonds are paying an interest rate of four to 5%, yeah, that I, I think the 4% rule can, can hold water. But when those bonds are paying 2%, it's hard, it's hard to, to you know, believe that your portfolio can sustainably uh, handle a 4% withdrawal rate when half of the money has a has a annual return of half of that. Therefore, we I have been part of that kind of growing crowd of people that say, "Gosh, I, I don't know if the four percent rule can can hold up in this environment." And we've been in that environment, like I said, since two thousand eight, two thousand nine, when there was a marked shift in our monetary policy. Interest rates have been held below overall inflation, although close to it. And now we're seeing this time of hyperinflation or elevated inflation, where we're trying to get interest rates back up to above inflation to try to get inflation down. And, and you know, now we finally have interest rates back up in the four, maybe 5% range if you're looking at one-year CDs, those sorts of things. So if you're following that analysis and sort of thinking through this, this sort of, uh, th this, this thought exercise here, that going, you know, back when interest rates were strong, all of the historical data suggested that a 65 year old couple could withdraw about 4% of their portfolio, then increase that with inflation that, and that their money should last 20 to 25 years. And, and that should be a sustainable withdrawal rate. But when interest rates dropped and, and we've been in a low interest rate environment that puts some strain on the 4% rule. So if you're, if you're following there, now that interest rates are much higher, does that suggest now the 4% rule is back on the table? I would argue no. 
because in my opinion, we're not now, we're not in a new sustained rate uh, or sustained uh, environment where a four to 5% interest rate is going to be common. I, 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 I don't see it. I do expect that inflation will remain elevated for longer than what many people expect. Um, and therefore interest rates will need to remain elevated for a little bit you know, longer than what people would expect as well. However, you know, you're planning your retirement, you know, decades early and so that you're making sure that you're saving the right amount and your retirement's going to last decades. And I wouldn't expect that our consumer driven society and the level of debt that we have both as a country as well as as consumers, I wouldn't suspect that it's sustainable that those interest rates, these high interest rates, four or five percent, um, I don't I wouldn't expect that that's sustainable. Therefore, I would, I would say it's overly optimistic, it's overly aggressive to assume that for retirement that a 4% withdrawal rate is sustainable. Now, despite those feelings, that's just, you know, I, that no one knows the future. I certainly do not. And if you have been a student of this 4% rule, then you might know that the original analysis was just based on two asset classes. When you add more asset classes to it, oh my goodness, the, 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 the math suggests that the withdrawal rate could have been closer to 5%. So now with all of those asset classes and diversification and assuming interest rates are lower, I don't think, well, the 4% withdrawal rule needs to be a 2% withdrawal rule. No, in, in my opinion, in our opinion, I would still be looking between three and 4% as a sustainable withdrawal rate. But more so than that, I would be doing comprehensive financial planning where you're looking at all five factors of retirement to determine whether you're on track. That's going to go deeper and be more thorough than just a withdrawal rate. And then I would confirm that a, you know, that the withdrawal rate that fits within your, your overall five-factor retirement plan is within that three to 4% range. And I personally like something closer to 3%, gives you more flexibility, gives you more cushion. It means your, your retirement plan is more, is more conservative. Those five factors are what age are you gonna be done, What's your lifestyle? So how much will you be spending? And within that, you've got to factor in inflation, health insurance costs and, and taxes, all that sort of stuff. Uh, third is what are your income sources? So how do you optimize social security? How do you, you know, do, do, will you have a pension? So how are you gonna draw that? Will you work part-time, those sorts of things. Fourth is how much do you have saved up? How much do you have saved up and how much are you saving? And then finally, how much risk are you comfortable taking within your investment? So each of those, are decisions that you that you make. Some of them you have great control over, others you don't have a lot of control over. Maybe your health is suggesting you've got to be, re, be retired by a certain age, or maybe you get downsized from work, that sort of thing. Lifestyle, we often feel like, well, no, this is just how much it costs to live. Well, yeah, we, we you know pick where we live and the cars we drive and that sort of stuff. They're all related. They're choices, but you make a decision in one area, it's gonna impact what your options are in the other. So. First and foremost, as you're planning towards retirement, you've got to build that five-factor retirement plan. And then when you then look at, all right, well, from that, that plan, you know, once you have one that works and you're looking and saying, yep, that's what, that's what we're going to do, then you can stress test and say, all right, well, what withdrawal rate will that be? Therefore, to supplement our social security and our other income sources, how much will we, will we be drawing from our portfolio? My guess is you're gonna find that three, three and a half percent is that sustainable amount, amount where, that, where that five factor retirement plan works. So I'm not on the camp where all of a sudden because interest rates are back up, the 4% rule is back on the table. No, nah, I, I, I would hope so, that, that'd be fantastic. I would be shooting for a three to three and a half percent withdrawal rate. Personally though, I would sort of set that aside, build that five factor retirement plan. That's going to give you the clarity and confidence that you need to be able to retire at a certain point and that you, to know that you're doing the right things in order to retire at that time. And, Conveni conveniently, you can then look to say, well, does this fit? What sort of withdrawal rate is this? And, and, and that should give you some sort of extra layer of confidence that nope, you are on the right track. Hopefully your certified financial planner is helping you with all that. If you don't have a CFP on your team that can give you that clarity and confidence, you can co contact one on my team. Find us online, cohorn.com. That's cohorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.